Do you have a hard time getting your band saw to cut straight? Well, that's what I want to talk about today on Metal Tips and Tricks. Hey guys, welcome back to Metal Tips and Tricks. I want to talk about getting your bandsaw lined up to work correctly. You know, the original Delta bandsaw, which is one of the great designs, was done in 1934 and has hardly changed since then. There's been some changes in the stand, different options, things like that, but the basic concept of the machine has stayed the same. Such a successful design, almost everybody making bandsaws today has ripped it off. And to the point where a lot of the parts are interchangeable between this and another machine. But one of the things falls short on this is how people think you get the blade lined up to cut straight. First of all, people think that the guides are the key, getting the top guides set up correctly. Well, it's not the guides. The way people consider guides is actually, I want to say, loosely incorrect. People think it's to keep the blade straight. Really what the guides are for the two on the side on the top and the bottom are to keep the blade from vibrating back and forth. So if you can control that vibration, you have a better cut. On the back of the bearing, that is a true guide. It keeps your blade from being pushed back too far, and there's one on the bottom and the top. But those are not what control the blade to track straight. Another one, people think, well, your table or your fence are out of alignment. Well, that can be a problem, but that's not the real problem. Another one people talk about is it being coplanar, how the top and the bottom wheel have to be lined up perfectly. Well, that is not really an issue. As long as your blade stays on both wheels as it's running, you can get it lined up to where the blade goes straight. So now you're going to ask, well, if it's not those three things, guides, table alignment, or coplanar, what are they? Well, first of all, it's a sharp blade. If your blade is not sharp, you're going to have a more difficult time in keeping it in alignment. And this doesn't matter if we're talking cutting metal or cutting wood. Now, have you noticed this is a wood metal cutting bandsaw? There's a special transmission in it that slows it down for cutting metal. So you need to have a sharp blade, really, because what happens is your teeth are set out, and as those edges start to wear off, they have a harder time tracking and cutting the material. Next is blade tension. So how tight your blade is. Now I've read magazine articles on if you pluck it and you get this note of C, your blade is at the right tension. Well, C can be um, a high C, a middle C, a low C. So which C is it for one? Number two, all bandsaw blades are different. You know, this could be an eighth inch, a quarter inch, three quarter inch. It's going to give you a different note. Also, the distance here is going to be different. Uh, the metal is different. So the idea that it's going to make a note, like on a guitar string, well, boy, that is just misleading. A better way to test your tension is there is a scale on here, and it works OK. way I test tension is if I'm putting my material in, and it wants to go to the right to keep a straight cut, well, that tells me I don't have enough tension on it. So I will tension it down until the material starts driving straight. Now, if the material wants to go in at an angle, well, that means my tension is too high. That's how easy it is to really set the tension. And you don't want to set it, you want to get it to where you're not over tensioning because you'll stress the whole frame and also wear out the tires on the wheels, but that gives you an idea. And sometimes there's actually some manufacturers that have a way of taking that stress off and on. I don't worry about it. I use my bandsaw enough. Actually, almost every time I'm in the shop, I turn my bandsaw on. Now, if you only use your bandsaw a few times a month, well, every time you use it, you'll want to take that tension off the frame to help keep the tires from getting flat or warping the frame. But if you're using it constantly like I do, it's fine to leave the tension, at least in my opinion. But here is the real key to getting it to track correctly. And that's what is important I'm going to show you. I'm going to show you that it is so important to have it set up the right way to track that I'm going to loosen up all the guides 
and show you that I can get a straight cut without using any guides. So let me take this thing apart and we'll discuss it in just a minute. Now I have all the guides retracted. I've taken the covers off. And boy, guys, are we feeding the trolls right now because I'm going to turn this bandsaw on without any safety guards on it. Is that cool or what? Now, you've got to remember, if you look at some of the old, old bandsaws, you'll see these big 18-inch, 24-inch, 36-inch bandsaws without any guards on them. They are amazing to look at and they're hard to actually walk up to. Even now, having these guards off kind of creeps me out, but I am doing this to show you guys I would consider myself perfectly safe. I always think safety is up to you because at the end of the day, you're the one that's going to have to pay the price. So let's talk about getting this lined up. Now, a lot of people think when you line up a blade that you want to get the whole blade right on the center of the apex of the wheel. And what we're talking about in the apex of the wheel, all wheels have a crown to it. The reason of the crown is your belt or your blade actually wants to track and come to the highest point of the crown. If you look at big flat belt machinery, you'll see they're all crowned. And if you look at, you can see a belt that's you know 20 feet long between centers and it stays on there. And the reason it stays on there is because of that crown. And we try to center up the wheel. Well, what happens is these teeth on the blade on the front aren't supported. So think of it this way is trying to push a wagon. If you try to push a wagon, it wants to track and go all over the place. That's the same thing with the bandsaw blade, is that those teeth aren't supported and you push the wood in there, it wants to twist and bend and follow more of the grain of the wood. So what you actually want to do is get the teeth lined up or tracked, and there's a knob on the back that you turn, push the wheel out or push the wheel in, changing where the apex is on this so it lines up. Now again, I talked about coplanar. It does not matter how these wheels are in alignment to each other. As long as the bandsaw blade stays on there, it's fine. And remember, the blade is coming around from the top and down. That's why we care if this is lined up on the top not on the bottom because this is actually guiding and leading it. Now, like I said, I was going to show you that this will track just fine with none of the guides in there because, again, the guides are to control vibration to give you a cleaner cut, not help control the blade itself. Let me take a piece of wood without safety equipment and turn this on. Okay, as you can see, this didn't cut very good. And the, one of the reasons is, it got, goes back to the second reason, is tension. This is not tensioned upright. I was pushing it this way. I need to get some tension on this. So let me uh, turn the handle. The thinner your blade is, the less tension. The thicker the blade, of course, more tension. Do we got a no to see? Nope. So to save time, I'm not going to call all the way through this because I've got this set up for cutting steel, not wood. But I use the wood because it, it shows you a lot quicker the actions. So there you guys go. The three things you need to know. Sharp blade, get the blade, the teeth centered on the apex of the top wheel, and also tension. That's what's going to make your bandsaw cut correctly. Hope you guys enjoyed this little tip. And until next time, go out to your shop build something cool. Thanks. Mm -hmm.